In 1849, some damned fool found gold in California. Hundreds of thousands of other damned fools raced across the untamed country to claim their share. The locals, the outlaws, the bandits, the burning deserts, and the freezing mountains made sure only the toughest survived. Nineteen years later, in 1868, California fell into the sea during the biggest earthquake ever reported, and tens of thousands of damned fools died. The new west coast went from Mexico to Oregon. Everything west of that became the maze, a series of jagged mesas towering over the sea channels below. It wasn't a complete loss, though. In the aftermath, they discovered pockets of a rock that burned 100 times longer and 100 times hotter than coal. When lit, it put off a puff of pale white smoke. It also howled like tortured souls when it was burned, and long-term exposure to the rock, or the smoke, caused strange mental effects in those that handled it. Those that first found it called it Ghost Rock, and the name stuck. It didn't take long to convert traditional coal-powered steam engines to operate on Ghost Rock, and with the power-to-weight advantage of the new material, it wasn't long before smaller engines were in use. Horseless carriages, Ghost Rock-powered ships, and even steam-powered rapid-fire weapons are still as rare as hen's teeth, but they do exist. Or so you've heard. There's even stories of a device that uses the Ghost Rock directly to spew goats of flame onto the enemy. It ain't been no picnic politically, either. The Civil War that began in 1861 has been horribly and agonizingly prolonged by the use of ghost rock weapons by both sides. It's still going on now, in 1877. The inevitable weakening of the two main proponents has resulted in a fractured nation. There aren't two factions on this part of the continent anymore. There are six. An organization calling itself the United States of America controlled the north of what was once one country. President Ulysses S. Grant is trying to claim the whole of that country for his side and refuses to acknowledge the other nations. In the Confederate States to the south, President Jefferson Davies needs to get that Confederate state recognized as a nation to get himself re-elected. Ruled by the strong-willed Sitting Bull, the Sioux Nation has recently bloodied the nose of the Union at Little Bighorn. Custer is rumored to have survived and may be putting together a mercenary army bent on revenge. Since Ghost Rock was discovered in the sacred Black Hills of the Sioux Nation, thousands of white prospectors violated the borders in search of riches. This caused so much trouble that the leaders finally allowed the whites to mine the Black Hills, but only if they would not stray from there if they paid a fee to the nations, and if they lived only in the treaty city of Deadwood. Those who strayed outside these boundaries were considered trespassers and subject to Sioux law. The penalty was invariably death. A mysterious cowled figure known as Coyote has drawn together a coalition of Cherokee, Comanche, Creek, Seminole, Kiowa, Chickasaw, and Choctaw First Nations, promising the same success as the Sioux have in their lands. Very little is known about this Coyote Federation. They stick to themselves and almost never leave their claimed territory. The Mormons, a.k.a. the Latter-day Saints, aggravated most of the people back east, and so their leader, Brigham Young, packed them off as far from New York as he could get them. They ended up in Utah. Salt Lake City was founded in 1847. A few years later, Brigham declared the nation of Deseret would govern itself until such time as a properly functioning national government was convened. He doesn't expect to give up his nationhood any time soon. Salt Lake City is often called the City of Gloom because of its incredible factories. These factories build ghost rock-powered devices of steam and steel. The constant cloud of ghost rock soot that hangs in the air and permeates certain sections of the city give it its less-than-cheerful moniker. Although not seen as a nation, or even as a potential nation, Colorado, Kansas, and Oklahoma are called the Disputed Territories. But don't let that fool you. They are relatively free of the war only because they contain such a high density of railways and trails passing through them. 
what with troop transport, moving equipment and feed for the soldiers and their horses, transporting all other forms of military equipment and the occasional heavy crate of pillaged gold, all sides in the ongoing war are up to their necks in debt to the railways, and so a deal has been struck. Everyone uses the railways, and no one blows them up. Because of this deal, this area is booming financially. The railroad barons in particular are piling up the profits. They are also acting as the de facto government, unelected, uncontrolled, and unbridled in their pursuit of more power and money. After the Great Quake of 68, remember that, a few survivors led by one Reverend Grimm made it to the new coast and started the City of Lost Angels, also known as the Celestial City. It is a circular city set around the Church of Lost Angels. The Reverend Grimm preaches against the coming of the railroads. He has declared a sovereign state just this year. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, game creatively. Bye.